What's up everyone? First and foremost, I must say that Mega Man Zero, both the character and the franchise, is the property of Keiji Inafune into Create and Capcom. The games are great. Please support the official releases. Seriously, go play the games. They're great. Now, we're kicking off 2023 with a bit of a passion project for me and as you can already tell from the disclaimer, it's Mega Man Zero. The Mega Man Zero games are some of my favorite games from the entire Mega Man franchise. So much so that over a decade ago I attempted to make my own Mega Man Zero fan game using Adobe Flash because Flash games were all the hype back then. Jeez, Keely, way to show your age, man. Anyway, I never finished that project and I've always wanted to go back and take another swing at it. So here we are, but that's enough rambling, let's get to it. It's a new year and I'm trying to get into better habits when it comes to working on projects, which means, you guessed it, time for documentation. Uh, I kind of kept things short and sweet this time around because I wasn't sure exactly where this project was going to go. And because of that, what even am I going to cover in this video? After planning things out, I decided that the scope of this project would be a single level with a boss fight at the end. This video is going to cover setting up Zero. That includes obtaining and rigging the model, setting up movement mechanics, and finally his attacks. I was very excited to begin working on this, but I absolutely needed to establish the scope of this project. And more importantly, the scope of these devlog videos, otherwise I will be working on it forever. I used a sandbox project I created a few months ago as my starting point, and with that I like to introduce Sam. She's the test character in the sandbox project. Sam is set up with some basic movement mechanics, combo attacks, and some attacks from other popular games. Sam is OP, however this project ain't about Sam. Sorry Sam, should be back. Now, I'm not a 3D modeler and I really don't want to spend hours upon hours of creating my own Zero model, so the one that I used was ripped from a game called Mega Man X Dive. This made things a bit easier, but there was still an issue. The model wasn't rigged. For those who don't know, a rig is what allows the model to be animated. They're essentially like bones. Actually, that's exactly what they are. So I got to work on rigging the model in Blender. Well, I would have, except I forgot how to rig. Correction. So I got to work following YouTube tutorials for an hour or so to relearn how to rig and blend it. Then I got started rigging Zero's model. I spent some extra time on the hair because I wanted to be able to add physics to it later. Eventually I got it all set and Zero was imported into Unity. With the model done the next step was to integrate him into the sandbox project by replacing Sam. Once I got Zero some fresh animations and a new shader, I gave him his iconic Z Saber. I even set up an animator for the saber extending and retracting. Oh, and that hair I spent some extra time rigging? Completely worth it. I used an asset from the asset store called Jigglebone, uh, interesting name there, to achieve the physics effect on the hair. Now that he was added in, Zero was ready to have some new features. The first is his dash. Replacing Sam's rolling animation was all fine and good, but if you look at the original games, Zero also has a trail of after images following him whenever he does a dash. I set these up by making clones of Zero's game object during a dash animation and remove unneeded components like the rigid body and scripts on those clones. I also added a shader to create a hologram effect as well as created a script that would make the holograms fade and despawn after a certain amount of time. Also, like the original game, when Zero dashes while mid-air he moves forward while ignoring gravity and he can only perform one air dash before making contact with the ground. Next up, I wanted to give Zero some extra mobility, because in the original games, he's very mobile. To kick this off, I added sprint slash dash jumping. Here's how it works. First, you have to press and hold down the dash button in order to begin sprinting. Once Zero begins sprinting, you can release the sprint button. Once he's sprinting, just press jump and he goes into a sprint jump. Alternatively, you can press jump during the dash and that'll also trigger a sprint jump. Next up, I gave Zero the ability to automatically hop over short objects while sprinting. To make this work, there are three checks that I perform just ahead of the direction that Zero is facing. The first is foot level, second is waist level, and the third is head level. In order to trigger one of these auto traversal movements, the foot and waist level checks must return true, while the head level one returns false. After this initial check, one more check is performed at eye level, but also slightly further ahead of Zero in a downward direction. This check is to see the height of the object that Zero needs to clear. Once the second check is done, Zero moves across the object. This also triggers when Zero sprint jumps towards a ledge that he is able to just get his head above. The transition itself is not as smooth as I'd like it to be, but the foundation is there and that's a start. Building on this, Zero is also able to climb walls for a brief moment just to get a little extra height. 
To do this, all three of those checks I mentioned earlier need to all return true. This means that Zero has jumped against the wall that he is not able to get his head above. What happens next is Zero will climb up that wall for a short period of time and if he's able to get his head above the ledge, he'll transition into a vault animation that places him on top of that ledge. Now there's one more movement mechanic that I think we'd all agree would work well in a 3D Zero game. And that's wall running. To set this up, there's a wall check that emits from both sides of Zero, which check to see if he has sprint jump against the wall. If one of those left or right side checks return true, then some funky math is performed using the cross product of Zero's upward vector and the direction of the wall, aka the wall's normal vector. The cross product of these two vectors gives us the forward direction along the wall that Zero will be following. Remember being in math class and wondering when would you ever need to use any of that stuff outside of that class? Well, this is one of those situations. Zero will continue running along the wall as long as you keep forward pressed or you perform a wall jump by pressing the jump button during that wall run. Because of how the physics works to keep Zero against the wall when running, this also allows him to run against curved walls. This took a little bit of trial and error and I got some funny results. But once it got completed and working, it felt quite nice. With Zero's movement out of the way, the next thing to set up was Zero's attacks. But before getting into the Saber, I wanted to set up the Buster. I wasn't able to find a nice model for it, so I ended up using my own, using a gun model I grabbed off the asset store. As far as functionality goes, it pretty much works the same way you'd expect from a third person shooter. You hold one trigger to aim, press the other to fire. While aiming, Zero strafes at walking speed. He cannot sprint, but he can perform an evasive roll. Just like in the original games, Zero can charge a shot to increase the damage. It first goes green, where you can see the orb increasing in size until it becomes blue, meaning it's at max charge. In the next phase of this project, we're going to give Zero a special attack that revolves around the buster. Now for the fun part, the Z-Saber attacks. I wanted to stick to the source material and give him attacks that he has in-game as well as put my own little spin on him. I also gave myself a little leeway here and also gave Zero attacks that his original self had. Spoiler alert for any of you who haven't played any of the Mega Man Zero games, you've been warned. Now for those that have played it, we know that this Zero is a clone of this Zero. And this Zero is the original body of this Zero. By that logic, for me anyway, it makes sense that this Zero would be able to use any attacks that this Zero has used. Make sense? Cool. So as for the attacks, he has a combo that he can perform grounded or in air that both end in a charged saber attack. If the saber is unequipped and you press the attack button, he does an attack that equips the saber for you. This attack can transition into the combo string. If you press the attack button while performing a dash, Zero will do a dash attack that can also transition into the combo string. Zero also has four special attacks, each with grounded and aerial versions of themselves. The first is the Ryuin Gene, a flaming upward strike. If this attack is performed in the air, then it becomes a downward strike. Next is the Hyoret Suzan, a downward ice attack. When performed on the ground, it creates an area of ice spikes, and if performed in the air, Zero will dive towards the ground first, and then once landing, creates that same area of ice spikes. The third special attack is one that I already knew I wanted to add before this project even started, and that's the Kuenbu, Zero's spinning attack. He performs this attack differently depending on the game, so I made my own version. Finally, the fourth special attack is the Raijin Geki, an electric stabbing attack. This one also works the same in the air. And that's it for the specials. There are two bigger attacks that I wanted to add, but because of the scope of this half of the project, I'm going to add them later. At this point, I completed everything I had set to get done for the first half of this project, so I set a little test area to try things out. I added a mock UI that shows the specials, and a pause menu that lists a few options including showing the controls, and resetting the level if you run into some bugs, which there are a few bugs that need to be ironed out. There are also test dummies that Zero can attack, and a simple obstacle course to test out the movement mechanics. Oh, how'd that get there? Huh. Anyway, as you saw in the pause menu, there is partial support for controllers, and you can change the UI to match whatever input type you're using. And that wraps up the first half of this Mega Man Zero Remake project. Now, there's definitely a few bugs that need to be ironed out, a few movement animations that need to be replaced, and a couple other things that need to be added. I also need to clean up Zero's code a little bit because... What the hell? Yeah. As I said before, this isn't intended to be a full-blown game. There's a single level with a boss fight at the end, and pretty much just a vertical slice. You can download the current version of this project over on my Patreon. 
linked below. Speaking of Patreon, I'd like to give a big thanks to my patrons. You guys are the real MVPs. The second half of this project is scheduled to be completed in two weeks. So I really appreciate your patience while I work on this. All in all, I say it's coming together really well. But that's going to be it for me. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, drop a comment. And if you're feeling really generous, how about subscribing? I hope you all have a great rest of your day. And I'll see you in part two. Peace.